purpose of this presentation is to actually discuss how iNomads works. One of the important things is for you to understand exactly how the data flow occurs within an iNomads environment in order to best determine how you want to set up your systems when using iNomads. So let's take a look at how the data flow actually operates on the system. Fundamentally, you start with a browser, and that browser could be Opera, Safari, Firefox, IE, or Chrome, or technically any browser that's out there. It sends a request into the HTTP data server. And that server could be Apache, IIS, or our Easy Web. When the HTTP server gets the request, it determines that it needs to go and run an iNomads application. And to do that, it will actually go and spawn a PX Plus process, which includes the iNomads interface component. Once the spawn is complete, the HTTP server will then connect up to the iNomads interface. The iNomads interface will actually then go and run the application, which can go and access your data files and do all the various processing involved in your application. Once the application code has decided it has a screen to present to the user, or decided what it's going to do with the user, iNomads then takes that screen and forwards it back to the HTTP server, which in turn will then forward it back to the actual workstation and the actual browser that the user is operating on. Well, this is the basic data flow. There is, however, one problem that you can run into when running this type of setup, and that is the fact that the HTTP server and your PX Plus process run in the same environment. That is basically because the HTTP server actually spawned the PX Plus processor, all the environment variables, user ID, and permissions for the PX Plus process will be inherited from the HTTP server. While for many instances this may not be a problem, the big concern in some sites is the fact that that means that the data files involved in the application code have to be accessible by the HTTP server. This can be a concern in many cases where security is key and critical. So we do have a solution for solving that, and that's by using the simple client server host process as a go-between. So let's take a look at how this will actually work. Again, we have the same basic setup. The message will actually be sent in from the workstation. In this case, however, when the HTTP server recognizes it's an iNomads request, it sends a message off to the simple CS host process, which it in turn will then launch the PX Plus process in the iNomads modules. Once that launch is complete, the HTTP server can then go and carry on as usual, send the message over to iNomads, which in turn runs the application code, works with the data files, responses come back through the server and back to the workstation. So fundamentally, the simple CS host process is strongly responsible for actually launching the PX Plus process. That means that the environment for the PX Plus process is inherited from the simple CS host process and therefore it is easier to control who has file access. The simple CS host process can have different environment variables, different permissions, different user IDs, all based upon whatever environment you need to run your business application. There's a second advantage of using the simple CS host as the spawning mechanism, and that is the fact that you can actually run the system on two separate servers. One server can actually reside and with the HTTP server request, so it could have the Apache server or the IIS server and be the internet facing server. The other server could strictly be an application server on which the simple CS host process is going to be executing as well as the PX Plus processes. So now when the request is received by the HTTP server, it sends the request off to the simple CS host process on the other machine, which in turn launches the process on the other machine, and the two machines talk to each other. Again, keeping segregation from the web server and the data files and the application code. In order to actually complete this type of setup, about the only thing you need to do to your configuration, other than actually set up the two different machines, is make sure that you are sharing the temporary directory or the iNomads temp directory. The reason this directory needs to be shared is so that the PX Plus processes that go out and create PDF files or images and whatnot can actually go and update the files so they can then be forwarded back to the individual workstations. So, as you can see, we have a couple of different options for processing it. You can have it all on one machine where the HTTP server spawns processes. You can have it where the HTTP server uses the simple CS host to be the go-between for launching the individual background processes or you can have it on two totally separate machines with the requirement of having one shared directory. Hopefully this information will help you configure your systems correctly and give you a better understanding of the iNomads data flow.